Hello, today we're going to look at the idea of vaccination, but before we do that, it's probably worth looking at what is arguably the very first vaccination. And the events around this happened in about 1796, the late 1700s, and it revolved around a disease called smallpox. Smallpox was a horrible infectious disease and it killed about one third of the people who got it, often children. Even those who survived were often left with horrible scars and even something as serious as blindness. Now around that time in England, there was another disease that was often caught by milkmaids and that was called cowpox. Cowpox was a lot less deadly than smallpox and it was noticed that milkmaids that caught cowpox often did not go on to catch the more serious and the more deadly smallpox. So they didn't go on to catch smallpox. Now, this intrigued a country doctor who is now famous for doing this experiment. His name was Edward Jenner. And he was curious as to whether catching smallpox had an effect on protecting, sorry, catching cowpox had an effect on protecting from smallpox. So he decided to do an experiment. This might be, this might seem like quite an outrageous experiment, but and, and it was, but at the time he did this experiment. He took a young boy who was around the age of eight or nine and he scratched his skin and infected him with the pus from a cowpox blister. The young boy actually caught the cowpox and because it was a less deadly disease, he recovered from cowpox, but that wasn't the end of the story. He recovered from this disease cowpox, but then the next stage was to infect him with the smallpox virus and of course they didn't know about viruses then so again it was the pus from a blister from somebody who actually had smallpox and this was done by scratching the skin and making sure that that uh, got into the blood now miraculously or rather luckily for the boy he did not suffer from the disease smallpox and we could say that this was the very first vaccination ever now this of course has massive, massive ethical issues surrounding this because you can't just have a theory or a hunch and then start infecting people with diseases and this of course would now never be allowed to happen but at the time it was allowed to happen. Scientists weren't really sure whether it was true or not um, and he had to go on to do more experiments with more children um, and you can imagine he might have developed a bit of a reputation and I'm not sure what the young boy named James by the way would have thought if he ever saw him again but Edward Jenner did go on to do more experiments including some with his own son. That leads us on to now and how vaccinations actually work and the way they work is that a person is injected with a dead or weakened version of the pathogen. The white blood cells in the body will make the correct antibodies that will attack and destroy the pathogen and because it's weakened, the pathogen's weakened, it won't be a serious case of the disease. Importantly, there will be memory cells that are left in the body for a long time. And if then the pathogen enters the body again, white blood cells can make large quantities of the antibody very, very quickly and destroy the pathogen. So this is how the vaccination works it trains the body to be able to make the antibodies that it needs the memory cells will stay around for a very long time and if the pathogen comes back again the body is better at fighting it off through those production of those antibodies so we can do a little summary there four points the dead or weakened pathogen is injected into the body the body's immune system namely the white blood cells are stimulated to make antibodies for that pathogen if the same pathogen infects, infects the body again, the white blood cells respond quickly to produce the correct antibody and the infection is prevented. Important to note that it's quickly, the antibodies are made quickly and in large numbers. And that's going to allow the infection to be prevented. Now, you may have seen a graph that looks a little something like this and it's worth having a look at what this, is, what this all means. So we've got an increase in the levels of antibody after the vaccination quite a slow increase but uh, certainly an increase we've got a region there where the memory cells are ready to help produce more antibody and on the second infection or when the actual real pathogen infects we get antibodies produced and I know we've mentioned this before but it's certainly worth making a note 
first thing is that we get many more, or sorry, much more rapid production of those antibodies. And if you look at the two parts of the graph for the two peaks, the second one has a much higher gradient showing a faster anti antibody production than the first one. And the second thing is that we get antibody production in much larger numbers. And that is shown by the graph again with a much higher point for the second peak compared to the first peak. Okay, now it's also probably worth mentioning this, this is what happens with vaccination, but it can also happen naturally. So you can be naturally infected with a pathogen, a disease, and have a similar reaction on the second go. And that uh, a common example of that is chickenpox. It's a non-deadly disease and there's no vaccination for it. And it's very unlikely that people catch that again, simply for this reason. And this is uh, a natural way of becoming immune to a disease. It's probably worth mentioning also that smallpox, the disease we talked about at the beginning, has now been completely eradicated. It does not exist anymore. And since about 1980, there have been no cases and it's been pretty much wiped out. The last case, I believe, was 1977 or 1978. But this was as a result of a ma massive vaccination program with cooperation from people from countries all around the world. So it's something worth possibly looking up and seeing how that happened. And now before we end the video, it's worth spending one or two minutes on looking at why it's so important to get lots of people vaccinated against a particular disease. So have a look at this. We've got a population of people and there's a key there. We've got healthy in green, infected people in red and vaccinated in blue. There's no vaccinated currently on the screen but you can imagine that if we've got a few infected people and no vaccinated people that disease could quite easily spread through the population especially if it's a particularly infectious disease and you can imagine a large amount of the population will get that disease now imagine we vaccinated a few people so there in blue you can see a small proportion of that population that's been vaccinated what do we expect will happen well, we're still going to have a bit of a problem because those infected people there and there are still surrounded by people who are not vaccinated. And again, the disease is going to be able to spread to those non-vaccinated people. So you can see there how that disease could spread. But imagine we have a large part of the population, a large proportion of the population vaccinated, all or most you can see how it's much harder for that disease to spread. So we've got two people in this diagram that have the disease, but they are surrounded by people who have been vaccinated, so they cannot be infected. We've still got a few people who have not been vaccinated and are not infected, but there is much less chance of those people catching the disease because they are far away from people who actually have the disease. So they are unlikely to catch that disease. So it's really important that with vaccination programs, a large proportion, if not all of the population is vaccinated. Now it is desirable to try and get all of the population, but it's not always possible to do that. A recent example is a vaccine called the MMR vaccine, which was from three diseases called measles, mumps and rubella. But some people believed that taking that vaccine led to a condition called autism. And so some parents were not willing for their children to have that vaccine. And in other cases, it might just be a simple case of people not getting to doctors or medical facilities to get the vaccine. And the government would then do procedures like going into schools and having people vaccinated. No doubt you have been given vaccinations for several diseases over your lifetime. Um, and the reason for that is what we see on the screen there to try and immunize as a large amount of the population is possible to stop diseases from spreading.